Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be solving a popular Google interview question. Lead code number 150, evaluate reverse Polish notation. Evaluate the value of an arithmetic expression in reverse Polish, Polish notation. Valid operators are plus, minus, multiplication, and divide. Each operand may be an integer or another expression. Note that division between two integers should truncate towards zero and it is guaranteed that a given reverse Polish notation expression is always valid. That means that the expression would always evaluate to a result and there will not be any division by zero operations. Now, if you don't know what reverse Polish notation is, basically, instead of the you know operation coming between two numbers like we typically expect, it comes after it. So if we look at this tokens here, two, one plus three uh, multiplication, what this means is that we want to do, okay, so we do two and one, and then the next operation is a plus. So it would be two plus one. And then we essentially have a three, but then the next operation we want to use is a multiplication. So we want to multiply the result of whatever two and one was times three. So obviously this is three times three, and our final answer here is nine, which is what we expect. Now let's look at a little bit more complicated one where you know we don't immediately get a plus here or some sort of operation so we get 10 and 6 <clears throat> so essentially what this is going to mean is that um, we have 10 and then obviously we're looking for you know the next operation but it hasn't come yet so we basically want to keep going with our numbers so then the next one is 6 but we don't have an operation yet so we just keep going and we're gonna have to backfill our operations so then we have our 9 and then we have our three and then we finally get a plus so that means that nine and three are added together so this is going to be some operation here but then we have a minus 11 so we need to have our minus 11 and we're still looking for our next operation now we get to a multiplication so that means that essentially what that means is this is multiplied here so we have our multiplication here and then we get our divide so that means that we need to go back and then we have another multiplication which means that we backfill it here and then this is all you know one operation and then we have you know our 17 and a plus so we're going to add 17 to this entire thing here and then we're going to have our five and then we're adding five to the entirety of this so we can think of this as being kind of wrapped in parentheses and then plus five. Okay, so what does this evaluate to? I believe if we do it, so, oh boy, this is gonna get real messy real quick. So let us simplify this down. So this is 10 times six divided by, so this is um, 12 um, times uh, minus 11, so plus 17. Uh, okay, this is getting really, really messy. Plus five, and then we have, okay, so 10 times six divided by, what is this? Um, minus 132, and then plus 17, um, plus five, and basically we're just going through the math here. So we do this part, so we do this division, and remember this is integer division, so six divided by negative 132 is going to be zero because we truncate towards zero. So this is zero, so we have 10 times zero um, plus 17 plus five. So obviously this is zero, uh, so really it's just 17 plus five. So this entire, oops, you can't see that. This entire thing evaluates to 22. So a little bit messy there, but that's really what the math is. Um, and how do we actually want to solve this? Well, you can see that we are constantly backwards looking when we get a, um, you know, an operand here. So what we want to do, and okay, so for some reason it's not erasing it. What we want to do is essentially we want to use a stack here. And if we see a number, so basically as long as it's not a plus multiplication division or I guess there's no subtraction here in these examples but if we see a mathematical expression then what we want to do is actually take the last two numbers from our stack because we know that it's always going to be valid if we see a mathematical expression we will have seen at least two numbers uh, and they'll be in our stack and we can perform our 
um, you know, addition or subtraction, whatever it is. So let's kind of go through an example. And then if it's not a mathematical expression, we'll just add it to the stack. So for some reason, these aren't deleting, but we'll just start again. So we have our empty stack and obviously we get to a two first and it's not, you know, one of the math expressions. So we're going to add it, but as an integer, because obviously these are strings. So we're going to convert it to an integer and we're going to put two into our stack and then we're going to get to the one. And obviously this is a, um, you know, a number. So we want to process it. So we'll add it as an integer. Then we get to a plus. Now it's time to evaluate the expression. So our stack is always going to be storing the current state of our kind of, you know, problem. So what we want to do is we need to add two things together. So we're going to pop the first two elements from the stack. So once we do that, our stack will now become empty. And num1 is going to be 2 because it comes first. And then num2 is going to be our 1 because it comes second uh, when we popped it. So what we want to do is we want to add them together. So 2 plus 1. So obviously that's 3. And we're going to put that back into the stack. So now the stack is going to contain 3. And then we see a 3 here. And what we want to do is, again, we want to just add it to our stack, but as an integer. So we're going to convert it to an integer, add it to the stack. And then we see this multiplication. So we're going to pop the two values out. So we're going to have num1 equals 3, num2 equals 3. And then we need to apply the operation. So we're going to multiply these together. And we're going to get 9 here. And that is actually what we're going to put back into the stack. And at the end, our problem, uh, our stack is just going to have one element, which is our answer. So we just need to return whatever the, I guess, uh, zeroth index of our stack is. And that's actually how we're going to solve it. Hopefully it's clear sometimes with the diagram, it can get a little messy, especially with this really nasty math we had to do here. Hopefully I didn't lose you there. But once we go to the actual code editor, it's super simple. It's really easy to understand what's going on. And I'll walk you through line by line in case you don't, and we'll solve this problem. So I'll see you back okay. in the editor. We're in the code editor and it's time to write the code for the solution. So remember that we need a stack to basically uh, process all of our numbers and store our intermediate results as we're processing our you know, tokens here. So let's define that. So we'll say stack and that's going to be an empty list. And we're going to need some sort of data structure to keep track of our mathematical operations that we can have. So let's say operators, uh, operators is going to equal to a set. And in this set, we're going to be storing, let's see, we can have addition, subtraction, we can have uh, multiplication, and we can have division pretty simple. Now we need to process the tokens from left to right. And remember, if the current token is a number, then we just want to add it as an integer to our stack. And remember that the tokens are given to us as strings. That's why we have to convert to integer. Otherwise, we actually need to process the numbers. And we're guaranteed that the reverse Polish notation is always valid. So we don't have to worry about, you know, our stack not having enough elements, or, you know, some sort of divide by zero, we can always be guaranteed that it's going to work just fine. So we're going to say for token and tokens, we're going to say if the token is not in our operator, so if it's not if it's basically a number, so if token not in operate, I wish I could spell it today operators, we're going to say stack dot append, we're gonna put the integer of whatever the token is, and then we're just going to ask Python to continue with the for loop because we don't need to do anything more in this case. Otherwise, this means that we have, you know, one of these mathematical operators. So we need to actually process it and we need to use this operator on some numbers. So we're going to pop the last two elements from our stack, which is going to be representing the two numbers that we actually need to add together or multiply together, divide, subtract, whatever the actual operator is. So we're going to say num2 is going to be stack dot pop and we're going to say num1 is going to be stack dot pop and you know the order here matters because you know technically it's a stack so obviously num1 comes before num2 and we will need this for the subtraction case and you'll see in a second so we're going to say if token equals to an addition then oops sorry we need an actual variable to store a result here so we're going to say res equals zero and we're going to say that result is going to equal to num1 plus num2 pretty standard okay so if token equals to subtraction we need to be a little careful here and remember that num1 comes before num2 so we need to make sure that we say result equals to num1 <coughs> minus num2 because technically num1 comes before it 
and we don't want to subtract the wrong way because then we'll get the wrong answer. So be careful that num1 comes first and then you're subtracting num2 from num1. <clears throat> Otherwise, if we have multiplication, um, pretty standard, we just multiply the two numbers. So we're going to say result equals to num1 times num2. And then the last case, if we have division, where we need to be a little bit careful again, we're going to say result equals int of num1 minus num2. Now the problem tells us that our division should truncate towards zero. And typically we use the <clears throat> integer division operator in Python to do that. The issue here is, as you can see, we get negative numbers. And when you do integer division with negative numbers in Python specifically, it actually rounds them the wrong way. And this is gonna give us the wrong answer. So to get around this, <clears throat> what we typically do in Python at least, is to just use regular division uh, of the two numbers, but then cast the result to an integer. And that way it's going to round it correctly and actually round it the way that the problem expects. <clears throat> if you don't believe me, try it with just integer division and you'll see that your answer won't be accepted on questions that have negatives uh, when you're doing division operation. And the reason for that is because the rounding happens in the wrong direction. <clears throat> so you wanna make sure that you're actually um, doing it this way, otherwise you're gonna get the wrong answer. Now what we want to do is simply add this result to our stack so future operators can use it. So we're going to say stack <clears throat> dot pend result. And then that's really it. We will process our tokens from left to right. And at the end, our stack is just going to contain one number, which is going to be our result. So we're going to say return stack dot pop. And that's going to be our solution. Let's just run this, make sure we don't get any bugs. Okay, cool. And then we submit this and we can see that it works. Okay, we solved the problem. What is the time and space complexity? Well, the time complexity, as you can see, we're basically going from left to right over our tokens here. And we're gonna process every element once. So what this means is that we have a big O of N runtime. What about the space complexity? The space complexity is going to be big O of N as well. And the reason for this is if we have some uh, expression like this, where we end up pushing a lot of numbers to the stack before we actually get to some sort of operation. Basically, if it's like a lot of nested parentheses and we have all the numbers first and then the operations after that, uh, then we could potentially end up storing all of our numbers before we get to the point where we need to start popping them off. So that's why it's gonna be big O of N. It's gonna depend on the number of numbers and the order uh, that they actually come in our tokens, but it's never going to be more than half of the um, the length of tokens that we store in our stack. Uh, so realistically, this is like n over two, but because asymptotically it's the same as big O of n, we're just going to say that the runtime, uh, the space complexity is just um, big O of n. So that is your time and space complexity for this algorithm. Like I said, not really complicated. The code is really simple. Just those few little things to watch out for, namely the subtraction, make sure you do it in the right order, and then handling the actual um, interdivision because you can have negatives, making sure that you do it um, in a way that will give you the right solution. Otherwise, this question is super straightforward. You're just processing a list from left to right and doing a little bit of math. So nothing too crazy. Not sure why Google likes this question, but oh well. Anyway, if you like this video, please leave a like and comment. Uh, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel and I'll be pushing out a lot more videos in the coming weeks and months. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those. Otherwise, thank you for watching this video and have a nice day. Bye.